light. Cooperative Legacy Project interview number 74, May 12, 2007. We're visiting with Jim Zilverberg, South Dakota native, veteran cartoonist, and former staff member of the Farmers Union Grain Terminal Association, now part of CHS Inc. Jim, where and when were you born? Trip, South Dakota in 1918. Okay. Trip, T R I P P, Trip. Mm -hmm. And where was your family originally from? They're from Holland. Both, okay. bo both my father and mother are from Holland. Mm -hmm. My father came over first, and then he got enough money together to send for my mother, and then she came over a couple of years later. Okay. Yeah. And what was your father's <laughs> name? Jake. Jacob. Okay. Would you like to talk about him a little bit? What sort of a guy was he? Well, he was an artist. Mm -hmm. An artist? Oh, yes, a very good artist, and also had a photography shop in Holland. And he fell in love with my mother, and his brother Jim, his younger brother, got in some trouble, and they, he sent him to the United States. And then her, his mother worried about Jim, so she sent my dad over to look after Jim. <laughs> okay. What year would that have been? Oh, uh, that'd be around 1910, I suppose. 1910. I can't tell you exactly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How about your mother? What was her name? Let's go. Let's go. She was, uh, my my dad was from near Amsterdam, and my mother was a Frisian. Mm -hmm. That's northern Holland. They're called the Frisians. They're mm -hmm. bigger people. They're more like the Danes yep. and so on, and they're quite a bit different. And she met him at the photography shop, and he kept her coming back, saying her pictures weren't quite right yet until <laughs> <laughs> so he got acquainted with her. <laughs> okay. He came to the United States, and there was no place for his artwork. You know, so he, well, he had tuberculosis too, and so he had to come to the United States. And he couldn't sell his paintings here, of course, so he had to get into farming. Okay. You, you had uh, brothers? Do I have brothers? Yeah. Yeah, I have three brothers. Uh, Mac is deceased. Mm -hmm. John and Dave are still living. John's 83, Dave's 91, and I have a sister that's 90. Okay. What's yeah. her name? Hmm? What's her name? Jeanette. Mm -hmm. Janet, I guess you call it. Yeah. And the oldest was Mac, was it? Mac was the oldest, yeah. Okay. What are uh, what are some of your earliest memories out on the farm? Uh, you, you were born at Trip, but when did you get up, the family get out to the Hyde County area? Well, we moved to Western Springs first. My okay. dad bought a farm there. It was all all agriculture. And then he had a chance to buy this ranch near Highmore, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. So he bought the ranch, and I remember moving with the hay racks and the horses and moving all of our stuff over there. And uh, the first night, we're all, all the stuff's in there. My mother fixing us something to eat, and we're sitting in amongst all this stuff, having dinner, so on. And it was very, those are very depressive times. Very hard, very hard. And my father couldn't, couldn't make the payments after a while. And this gentleman says, you're a hard-working man. He said, when you get the money, you just send it to me. So he paid for the ranch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was uh, during the 30s, was it? Yeah, in the early 30s, and when the grasshoppers and the dust storms and stuff. You know. mm -hmm. you remember dust storms out there? Oh, I, they're a very vivid memory for me. <laughs> very vivid. Very, it's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were were there a lot of farmers foreclosed in that area? Did well, you, <coughs> they, they, yes. They, in those days, you know, you if you weren't as lucky as your family to yeah, get a chance to continue. If you owed money, uh, if you owed twenty dollars and you couldn't pay it, the bank took your place away from you. See, they had no no interest in it. So a lot of people lost their farms. And gradually, the big ranchers bought up the small ones, too, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the way it went. Mm -hmm. That was a time when there were a lot of banks that went under, too. Yeah. Uh, yes, they did. Did yeah. that happen in that area as well? Yes, not too many, because we, we only had one town in the whole county. Mm -hmm. And that was the county seat, of course. But, uh, yeah, they had their trouble, too.
You have to have money to operate, you know. Mm -hmm. And nobody had money. Yep. You were just a kid, but do you remember anything about the political climate out in that area? Uh, South Dakota, of course, has always been a pretty Republican state. How did people out there in that area feel about Roosevelt and the New Deal? Well, I think I think they were quite receptive to him. Um, he helped them out a lot, a lot of ways. Uh, I don't think, I think a lot of the people were conservative, but they had not much choice. They almost had to cooperate with him, cooperate with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was always some money to be made if you wanted to work. Mm -hmm. My dad would never let it. He said, we can take care of ourselves. So as we did, we had hogs and we had chickens and and turkeys and cattle. So we we fed ourselves, lots of pheasants to shoot, rabbits. Mm -hmm. How about the, the uh, AAA farm policy? Remember anything about that? Uh, Not very much. Some, uh, I know so I've talked to some people who remembered uh, maybe killing livestock. To yeah, they, they, or something. yeah, they did. The government killed livestock. Matter of fact, my oldest brother was one of the guys who had to shoot them. They would dig a big trench and they'd just cattle next to it and they'd shoot them and fall in the trench. And I thought this was terrible because so many people were going hungry and they were trying to keep the prices up by killing off the cattle. Why not just give them to somebody to eat, you know? I felt that was all wrong. Was your uh, was your family out there, was the Farmers Union out there then? Yes. Were, were they active in it? Yes. Uh, local co well, had they started a co-op there yet? Then they didn't have a co-op there at they that didn't. time. No. Okay. You remember attending local meetings out there? Doing what? Attending local meetings. Oh yes, there? oh yes. I was just a kid, but the biggest day of the year was when they had uh, uh, oyster stew. Oh yeah. And everybody would come for oyster stew. That, that was a big day of the year. So, yeah, they had their meetings. Mm -hmm. Farmers needed all the help they could get. Uh, where did you go to school? Did you go to country school out there? Or? No, yeah, I went to country school, and then I went to high school in Highmore. Okay, what was the country school like? Out there? Well, just a little little house out in the prairie. Yep. Everybody rode horses to school. We had a barn there. We'd put the horses in the barn, give them some hay, and we have races in, during the noon hour sometimes. And <laughs> but pretty much everybody rode horses. So. Uh -huh. We had quite a ways to go to go to school, you know. And high school in? Highmore. In Highmore. Yeah. Then I went to college at Aberdeen. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, where did you meet your wife at? I met my wife from Minneapolis. Um, we, uh, I met her one time and she was... At a ticket counter, I met her the first time, and then I met her at a old-fashioned dance. And uh, there's quite a story behind that, because I wasn't interested. She wasn't either, particularly at first, and it just kind of came along, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When did you get married? We got married 57 years ago. Okay. Had six children. Mm-hmm. Five boys and a girl. And what are their names, and where are they at? Uh, Pat, Patrick is the oldest, and Larry, and then uh, Greg, Daniel, Mark, and Mary are twins. Mm -hmm. And uh, three older boys are in business together in the Carlson Building. They do a big business with farm publication, farm things from the farm, and one thing or another. Mm -hmm. And my son in Belle Plain is a veterinary. Okay. And my daughter works for Cargo. Oh, okay. All right. And grandchildren? Eleven. Eleven of them, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, you were, did you serve in the military? Yes, I was in the Navy. Okay. And uh, what ship would that have been? Would that be in well, World War II? I worked, actually I was in the Coast Guard. I, I worked in the... Uh, in the office, and I did a lot of the math and the payrolls and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Then I went overseas. I went to Alaska, and I was aboard several ships, you know, mm -hmm. escort vessels on the troop transport, things like that. So, But I didn't see any of the heavy action. My brother John saw a lot of, a lot of heavy action. He was in the West Pacific. Mm -hmm. So but I didn't. I saw a couple of submarines. That was about it. You weren't involved in the uh, effort to retake the two uh, Atu, I think, in Kiska. The, uh, I was in Atu. I was stationed on Atu. You were stationed there. Mm -hmm. okay. Was that after the Japanese had been driven? Uh, out? Yeah, they they were driven out of Kiska, mm -hmm. not Atu. They never got to Atu. Oh, okay. But they they were going to. No, Atu was the, well, that's where they were in Atu. Mm -hmm. And what's that other island I was on? I can't think of it now. Well, then they were going to invade Kiska, and they found out they, they were scared of us, and they moved away. So mm -hmm. I was at ADAC. That's where I was. Oh, okay. ADAC. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, what did you do? You got out of the, the service and when? Well, before the war, I taught school for three years. Oh, you did? Where at? Uh, hmm. Two years near... North of Highmore. Okay. And uh, one year I taught junior high school near Madison, South Dakota. Okay. Where would, where, where would it be in Madison? Or right in Madison? Or? No, it was a little town just west of Madison called okay. Junius. Okay, Junius. Yeah. yeah. Long it's, time haven't had a school there. Right? No, that's it's a kind of a historic building now. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Mm -hmm. I got tired of that. So I, and then the service came along, so. Sure, sure. And, uh, and and after teaching school, you moved to the cities here? After the war, I moved after to the, the cities, war. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, did you, uh, uh, when when you were a kid, did you always have artistic talent? You said your dad was an artist. Yes, so. my dad was a very good artist. Were He's, your brother's artists and sister artists? Some of my dad's paintings here. Oh, okay. Yeah. These yeah. are up here, too, you know. Yes. Oh, he yeah. was a very good artist, and I uh -huh. I liked the artwork, so I was always copying the comic strips. Mm -hmm. That's right. I like to do. Okay, and that's a little different than your dad was. Oh, doing. yes. I was not that kind of an artist. Yeah. My oldest son is that kind of an artist. He's a very good artist. Mm -hmm. But I was not interested in painting. I was interested in the cartooning. Yep, yep. There seems to be a lot of uh, artistic talent in the family. Yeah, yeah. My, my niece... Uh, Lucinda she was quite talented. And mm -hmm. Did you uh, you attend art school at all, or did you just? Well, at college, we had a good art teacher at college. Okay. He was very good, and he said, "Mr. Zoverberg, he said, if you're going to make a living at this, he said that doodling you do on the side is probably where you make your living." <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. I had a science teacher with a typical science teacher with a. His glasses on the end of his nose and his hair was half bald. And so on. He was a typical science teacher. And my name starts with a Z, so I'm sitting in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. And I started doing a caricature of him. And every, pretty soon everybody started to look. And he said, why don't you stay after class? Bring that up here. And he brought it up. And he said, you stay after class. And he looked at that and he said, you know, this is pretty good. He said, I won't kick you out of class. But he said, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so how did you get into cartooning then? Uh, as a well, after the war, there? I walked by a, I walked by an art uh, shop mm -hmm. where they did art, commercial artwork, and and uh, asked him if he would take on an apprentice, and he said no, but he said. I work on a commission, but he said, let's see if you can draw. So he gave me the scissor roll by catalog, and I had to draw a vacuum cleaner. He said, yeah, you could draw pretty good. He said, you want to stick around? I'll help you. So I worked six months for nothing. And my first account was the Snyder Drug Stores, and I got paid 10 cents a piece for each of the drawings. <laughs> That's how it started. But then I kept doodling, and finally I sold a cartoon to... Uh, uh, oh, Du Bois. What's the name of that magazine, Du Bois? Oh, the. Uh, oh, well, anyway, I sold the farm magazines. Now? Yeah, farm magazine. I had fifteen dollars for it, and I couldn't stop after that. That was. I finally opened my own studio. Okay. Okay. Better no, not Better Homes and Gardens. It was. Mm. Well, anyway, same company. 
Yeah. Uh, were there, uh, as you were getting started, were there cartoonists that you admired? Uh, oh, sure. I admired Walt Disney a great deal. I copied a lot of his stuff. I didn't copy it to sell. I copied it to learn to draw because mm-hmm. he had great technique. And you start out with the small magazines and gradually the big magazines begin to recognize you and so you start making a little money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, did, did you, did you, in those days, did you just personally deliver the cartoons to places where you uh, hoped maybe they'd uh, buy? Oh, no, you have to send them send. to them and you have to put an envelope for the ones they don't take, I put in an envelope for them to return them to you if they don't okay. take them. See, it hasn't changed much. Then I no, I think not. Like that. That's that's why I I draw pretty much locally now because I don't want to be bothered with that. So mm-hmm. that's sure. a nuisance. Uh, I read somewhere where you were you were acquainted with Charles Schultz. Yeah, you? we kind of started out together about the same time. Okay, and uh, he he wasn't the greatest. Don't put that in there. But he wasn't the greatest cartoonist in the world. And but and we were on a radio talk show together one time too. And we played golf together, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, I can't say we were real close to friends because he was not a very easy person to be a close friend with. Yeah. But he had a lot of talent, and he was very intelligent. So his father was a barber. Yeah, he had a barber and shop. Like Charlie Brown. Had a barber shop above a bar in St. Paul. Mm-hmm. You, you you were acquainted with his dad too. Right? No. But they did have uh, a homecoming for Charlie Schultz in that bar, mm-hmm. and I got invited to that. That was about 20 years later or something like that. Okay. <laughs> right. And he had the idea for Peanuts yet when he left here? Yeah, Peanuts is uh, kind of the story of his life, you know. Yeah. It's Charlie Brown, and I met Charlie Brown as a gentleman here that was Charlie Brown that was a friend of of his and and uh, he was gay by the way you wouldn't know, have put that in there but <laughs> and he's not alive anymore he died of the disease you know uh-huh. so but and Charlie Schultz was married and four children and his wife was not happy with him in Minneapolis she didn't think he was getting enough recognition so they moved to San Francisco and they finally divorced, and then he married again. Mm-hmm. But I remember her quite well. Yeah. And Charlie Schultz's father-in-law had an apartment behind my studio, and he would come and answer my phone and deliver my cartoons. And he didn't charge me for it; he just liked to be with me. So he, that was his father-in-law. Okay. Okay. Uh. Were there a lot of other cartoonists in the cities in those days? Oh, quite a few. We used to have meetings. You know, we'd get together and show our stuff to each other and stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a cartoonist, how do you come up with an idea, ideas for, uh, is it different to come up with an individual cartoon than it is to come up with an idea for a continuing thing? Yes, it is a little different because a comic strip, you, you have the idea, but you have to bring it to a surprise ending kind of mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah. I'll show you one of my comics or some of my comics after a while but with the the panel cartoon you think of a good idea and you put it on paper that's it it's got to be funny mm-hmm. so I still think I'm up I'm working on two of them right now mm-hmm. <laughs> is there a difference between the, the kind of panel that has like three three uh three panels, I guess you would say, uh, that has like three windows or whatever you call yeah. them. Panels, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to something like the far side where it all is in one. Well, there's no set rule on that. Yeah. If the syndicate likes it, see the syndicate, the biggest syndicate in the United States wanted to buy my comic strip, but they wanted to make it all farming, mm-hmm. you know. And I said, you can't do that. I said, you stifle my creativity. I said, I have to have room... You know, the farm farm people have children. They do all have all the problems everybody else has. Just just yeah. a farm setting, and they wouldn't take it that way. So I turned them down. Did you uh, did you do any editorial cartooning at that time? Quite a bit, yeah. Okay. For the Farmers Union Grain Terminal Association, did a lot of it for them. 
Yeah, when did you start working with them? Oh, I know one summer things were kind of slow, and I talked to the editor of the Herald, and he said, well, Jim, he said, we need an artist. He said, I said, well, I'm not going to give up my cartooning. He said, no, you keep your, your account with us. We'll pay you separate on that, and then we'll hire you on a monthly basis. So then I went to work, and I kept my own business there, too. They took care of all my expenses, and, mm -hmm. you know, it was a pretty nice setup. Yeah. Um, was the process different for on those cartoons? Did did you come up with the ideas, or did they come in and say, here's a subject? And oh, no, I have to come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But I kind of followed what was going on in the farm, farm field, of course. Mm -hmm. I'll show you some of those after a while. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember? What year it was when you first been involved with GTA? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't be an awful good guess. Okay, it was after the war. It probably around the around nineteen fifty, probably somewhere in there. Maybe okay. maybe a little later. I don't know exactly. Okay. Uh, did you? Did you just work with the paper? Did you did you have to deal with the M.W. Thatcher? Oh no, I I worked with uh, Mr. Thatcher too. Whenever he wanted something done, he always called me up. And, mm -hmm. and I remember during one election time, he wanted me to all 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 the states and all the candidates and everything. I worked on it about three days and took it up to him, and he was just overwhelmed with it. He took me out for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a pretty good guy in his own way. He had his faults, too, but... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been getting some different perspectives on him from some, some folks. Um, you know, the cartoons, in those days it was uh, Farmer's Union Herald. Did you ever do anything in the... I think there was a GTA Digest, too. Did they ever do anything? No, I used to do cartoons for... Some co-op down in Kentucky. Oh, okay. And GTA made me quit. Oh, okay. Cool. I said, "Why do you want to make me quit?" I said, "We're trying to help the farmers." And they said, mm -hmm. "Well, we just you just can't work for them." Yeah. And they were paying me a lot more money than GTA was. Mm. <laughs> okay. Did did they reach the point where you were just a regu regularly employed, or was, oh, yeah. was it a company? well? I was on a retainer. Retainer. Yeah. Okay. You had you had an office over at the GTA. Oh company, yeah, I had a nice place to work. Yeah. They furnished me a telephone and everything. They just they took care of everything for me, all the material, everything. Mm -hmm. Back in that era, GTA took a more of an active, well, and then a more active interest in farm policy. It seems like than than the, some of the later, like harvest when they converted to harvest states or or the, or today. Uh, well, Thatcher was very involved, wasn't he? Yeah, Thatcher and Humphrey were together quite a bit. Yeah, I met Humphrey a number of times. He had a couple of my cartoons in his office. Mm -hmm. uh, he he was very much a farm interest man, you know. He, he was a good man. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Thatcher liked having him come over for lunch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, issues that uh, was always... Uh, beginning, I guess, in the early 1950s were the wheat referendums. I think that was the the issue that caused, I think, Thatcher to hire an editor out in South Dakota or send, a, send somebody out there to be an editor for the Farmers Union out there so they'd have a full-time person. Uh, was that something you guys got involved in here, too? Well, I did editorial cartoons on it. Yeah. And that went on for about, what, 12 or 13 years? I can't years? remember. Yeah. Um, what sort of other subject matter were your cartoons? Or well, I suppose we can look at some of them a little later. Yeah, well. Did you do one on property taxes one time? It seems like we had one out the well, office. Well, I did, I I did, did cartoons. A guy tried to pry a giant <laughs> rock off of something. I did cartoons and everything. I got a lot of them in there. I'll show it to you. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I did their commercial art for them, too. Mm -hmm. You know, if they needed something commercial, I'd do that for them, too, because I was the commercial artist first. So anything they needed, I could do. Mm -hmm. And that was very convenient for them. Yeah. And the people in public relations, a lot of times they bring in what they had written, asked me to 
go over it with them and stuff like that. So it's very complimentary. Mm -hmm. Were uh, your cartoons uh, ever published in any of the Farmers Union state organizations? Did they? I can't tell you that for them? sure. I'm sure they were, but I can't yeah. tell you for sure. Yeah. And you were also that they did. They let you do freelance work, but uh, but not with another co-op. No. No, they wouldn't let me work for the other co-op. Mm -hmm. I thought that was wrong. Um, I guess I remember you doing uh, caricatures of people when at the annual at the convention. CTA oh yeah, that was a big thing. They had a lot of fun with that. Did so. that go way back, or I think you were doing yeah, it when I first went quite a few movie. years. Yeah. I remember uh, Barney Molesky was the head of the company then, and he come by one more time, and he said, you get more people out here, and I get inside, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and people love editorial or caricatures. I do a caricature. He said, I do a caricature of you, and I say, what do you do? F what do you raise on your farm? Oh, I raise pigs. Okay, so then I draw a pig with his feet up on the fence like this, and he said, hey, Jack, is that really you? You know, <laughs> they just loved that thing, yeah. Okay. That was very popular. And then during the conventions, I would put up all the cartoons along the wall, too. And so they could come through the studio and look at the cartoons. And i got to tell you about a funny one. Uh, this fellow was in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I can get this straight now. And a pretty well-endowed waitress went by. And he was looking at her, of course, and his wife was angry with him. She said, you dairy farmers are all alike. <laughs> <laughs> and this lady came by, and she was a very prissy-looking lady. She looked at that cartoon, she waited till everybody was gone, and she pulled her husband over there to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Thatcher retired in about 1967. Uh yeah, let's see, see, somewhere in there, let's see. I guess that's pretty close, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you also have any connect, contact with any of the board, members of the board when they would come in? Not very often, no. Okay. You, uh, did you know Emil Lorix? Yeah, I knew Emil quite well. Matter of fact, I knew him real well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, when the board met, they met with Thatcher, and they all went out for dinner, and they... They treated the the board really luxuriously, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know how much good it did. I just <laughs> so, sometimes wondered about that. It just it's a hard thing to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was there a significant change in the office when when uh, Barney was Barney Molesky? Did he take over right directly from Thatcher? Yeah. yeah. No, not a great deal, I don't think. The, um, he took advantage of the company a little bit like Mr. Thatcher did. I don't want you to put that in there, yeah. but uh, they took advantage of getting themselves a nice cabin and a car and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. and I don't want you to put that in there, but yeah. they took advantage of the, their position pretty bad. So how long were you uh, at GTA then? 20 years. 20 years, from yep. 1950 to about... Yeah. I was 62 when I re retired, so it would be in 52 to six, no, 42. No, that's not right. I was with them for 20 years. It must have been 70. I don't know. You got me all mixed up now. I yeah, know. yeah. I was with them 20 years anyway. Mm-hmm. Do you, is there a, is there any kind of a continuing relationship with any of the people you worked with over there? Well, they get invited and get invited to meet with them every once in a while, but it's way over in St. Paul, so I don't usually go. Yeah, we used to get together over in East Minneapolis, East Minneapolis or what, yeah, North Minneapolis, someplace, and mostly people that I worked with and friends. But mm -hmm. they're all getting old now, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. What's their name? With Bob Hanson. Oh yeah, I knew Bob very well. Yeah, mm -hmm. he got he took over after Molesky left. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Oh, you know, big companies, big companies have their problems. You know, they their personnel problems all the time. This yeah. is, you you got to expect that. I just a certain amount of envy and jealousy and things that goes on, and I guess you have to live with it. Mm -hmm. Does the uh, the cooperative over in uh, Inver Grove now, where they're all together in the, in the same Senex. The Senex building, do they mm -hmm. communicate with their former employees much? I get invited every year to something, but I never go. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. yeah. Did they have any kind of a pension program that when you were? Oh yeah, I get I get a pension, but I I wasn't paid that much, so mm -hmm. and I only worked there for that period of time, so yeah. my pension wasn't that big. Yeah. yeah, but they had the best thing they put in was it. They put in, I think, two percent of your paycheck, and then you had to match it. Okay. And that was, but that only lasted for a short while before I left. That was the best thing they ever did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good way to save money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like a four hundred one k today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you you continued cartooning after you. Uh, oh yes. Retired. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, I had six kids to bring up. I had had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> How has cartooning changed over the years from your early years to... to well, I don't think it's improved any. Mm -hmm. I think the humor is very bad. Yeah. I look at the comic strips now and I just I just look at them and I just... What's funny about this? I'll have to show you one that I think is funny. Mm -hmm. I kept it because I think it's rather apropos. Yep. You get it? <laughs> as soon as the doctor tells him he's in pretty good shape, he's cured. <laughs> yeah. A lot of truth to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I tend to think that today's, uh, uh, you know, having the prescription drug ads on TV makes is a great era for people who are hypochondriacs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, people get involved in that stuff. It's terrible. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Uh, your your uh, late niece uh, Lucinda took over one of your car cartoon strips. She for took a while, my right? my comic strip, The Tillers. Yeah. Did that she, continue she, after? Did she? she it, did you get she it back? Didn't, no, she didn't have very good luck with it. She couldn't write the humor the right way, and mm -hmm. she'd write it and send it to me, and I'd help help her with it. But she, yeah. it just wasn't the same when she got it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the sense of humor is part of. Uh, yeah. Of, of cartooning. And she couldn't cartoon as good as I did either. She didn't have the same flow. Mm -hmm. She was more of an artist than she was a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. She liked to paint horses, didn't oh, she? Oh, yeah, she loved painting. Yeah. yeah, she liked to paint. Yeah. Were there other artists in your family besides Lucinda and yourself? Mm -hmm. and your well, dad? I have a cousin. My, my uh, dad's brother's son is an artist up in Alaska. Mm-hmm. That's a long ways away. Otherwise, yeah. the rest of my family, my sister was quite artistic, but she never did it for a living. Uh -huh. Besides cartooning, what else have you been doing? You play a little golf? Play a little golf. I bowl a little bit. Mm -hmm. Try to stay as active as I can. Okay. Uh, during your years uh, with... Uh, with GTA, was, did you have any disappointments in working with him? What, was, was, what would have been a disappointment? Well, uh, I'm always disappointed by people that brown nose too much, you know. I just, there's no need for that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thatcher would walk down the hall and these people would just act crazy, you know. And I just, I disapprove of that. I just don't think that's a proper thing to do. If I were him, I'd have been annoyed by it. I mm -hmm. just, and there's a certain amount of dishonesty, a certain amount of sex stuff that's going on that shouldn't be. Married men that are messing around, mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. that's all part of a big company, I guess. Yeah. Happens in all big companies. Mm -hmm. What were you most proud of that you were involved with? 
most proud of. You mean the, the art I did? Yeah. Well, the editorial cartoons and the comic strip probably were the best. Mm -hmm. I got so much mileage out of that. And now they publish a calendar of my cartoons. I'll give you one of those. Oh, okay. Great. And uh, that's been going since 1969. Mm -hmm. And we had a 100th anniversary down there a few years back. And they had my wife and I stand up and they said, Jim's the oldest cartoonist or you oldest artist for the company. And he said, the salesmen get more points out of his calendar than they do anything they sell. <laughs> that's a pretty nice compliment. Yeah, yeah. What kind of advice would you give someone uh, if they were considering maybe a career in cartooning today? Well, you have you just have to work and work and work, and you have to develop a style, of course, and you have to be very patient. Like one of the gentlemen at the studio said to me, how do you keep sending that stuff out and you get those rejection slips back all the time? And I said, well, if I quit, I'm beat, see? It takes a lot of determination. It really does. Do Is there a lot of people who maybe look at some somebody like uh, Gary Larson or, or, and, 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 and think that they're going to get fabulously wealthy doing it or... Well, Charlie Schultz got fabulously he did. wealthy. He did, didn't he? Yeah, and he was very lucky. His his comic strip got picked almost immediately. Mm -hmm. He never did any cartoons outside of the comic strip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was very lucky. I remember when he first he said he made two thousand dollars. He took us all golfing because he'd made two thousand dollars that month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would it would it be harder or easier to get started today, do you think, than it was back then? No, oh, it's kind of hard to say because I'm not involved in it. Yeah. I'd say probably a little bit harder, probably, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But humor is always good because they put humor in a magazine to get people to, if they don't look at anything else, they'll look at the cartoons. And if yeah. they look at the cartoons, they'll see something else. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons they're in there. And I think editorial cartoons, they, say, they tell a big story that you can't put in writing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the expressions and things, I always thought the editorial cartoons were so great. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was, there a, was there an editorial cartoonist that you really admired? Yeah, there's been several of them. I admire the one that's with the star now, but I disagree with him politically. Mm -hmm. I think he's way too far left. But he's a very good artist. Very good. Oh, I can't remember all the names. It's been so long ago. Uh, I've got a couple, just a couple questions left. Uh, okay. Um, one of them uh, is, are you an optimist or a pessimist? I always ask people, and I hardly ever find well, a if pessimist. You're, if you're going to be an op uh, a cartoonist, you better be an optimist. Yeah. <laughs> you bet. Is there anything you would like to talk about that I didn't ask you about? No, I think you covered it quite well. I might, I might say that my, my wife and my children were great because we had tough times. Mm -hmm. And she never complained about money. The kids always had everything they needed, but she and I didn't always have everything we needed. But no, no I don't think of anything particularly. I, I don't think I got your wife's name. Alice. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. She's in home up here about half a mile away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just in the last year or so? Then? About a year ago, yeah. She had she had Parkinson's for a long time. I took care of her at home, but I couldn't anymore until I had to put her in a home. Mm -hmm. It's assisted living. It's not a nursing home. Yeah. It's a very nice place. Mm-hmm. But very expensive. <laughs> yep, they all are. Yeah. We've been visiting with Jim Zilverberg. Thank you for participating in the Cooperative Legacy Project. You're very welcome.